What's going on guys? This is Alex with Metastophicles Gaming bringing you some of the Lord of the Rings collector booster packs today. Um, very excited to open these. Uh, there's a lot of cool things you can get out of them. Uh, the Lord of the Rings set as a whole is really cool. You do have the chance to get the serialized cards in these packs, uh, whether it's, you know, that super sought after one of one ring, which probably we will not pull, but you know, if that happens, that'd be epic. Um, but more than likely, if we pull a serialized car at all, card at all, it will be one of the soul rings. Um, there's three, 300 of the elven rings, 700 of the dwarven rings, and 900 of the, uh, hum uh no, man, I guess, is the rings given to the kingdoms of men. Um, so those are the serialized ones, and I think there's like 3,000 of the non-serialized elf, 7,000 of the non-serialized dwarf, and 9,000 of the non-serialized men. So we're gonna open these today. We have the box topper from the box we bought, so we'll open that as well at the end of the video. Um, but that being said, let's go ahead and see what cool cards we can pull out of these really cool looking Lord of the Rings collector boosters. All right, pack number one. Let's go ahead and get into it. It looks like there's no little slit to open, so. So starting off, we are going to pull a card that won't auto-focus. So we get a Snarling Warg, an Escape from Orthanc, Knight of Dol Amroth, Cast into the Fire, Long List of the Ents, which is that interesting saga with all of those uh, lists there. Faramir, Field Commander, nice foil, uh, Forest with that nice map art, which I think is really cool looking. And we Not do bad. get a Flowering Not of the Light Tree, which is a really cool, really good card. Um, I definitely like to see that. It's an interesting, um, gets you Ward 1 on all your legendary creatures, plus 2, plus 1. So it's a, it's a Anthem Plus, which is kind of cool to see. Uh, we get an Elven Chorus which is four mana for a enchantment. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. Cast creature spells from the top of your library and creatures you control have tapped add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Uh, Aragorn, King of Gondor. A Nazgul, which is nice. one of the uncommons that right now, uh, as of recording this, is going for a decent amount. Uh, Gimli. Rosie Cotton of South Lane, Gandalf, Friend of the Shire, Pippin, and a Food and Army token. So pretty cool pack. Uh, definitely like to pull those Nazgul. Uh, Aragorn is cool to see with the Vigilance lifelink. 4-4, uh, when he enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch. And when he attacks, up to one target creature uh, can't block this turn. And if you're the Monarch, creatures can't block this turn, which seems very powerful. Um, that card looks really cool in the foil and that you can put together with a few others to make that cool artwork um, Very cool pack Happy to see that moving on to pack number two Sometimes these things are super tough to open uh, So we do get a soothing of Smeagol Mushroom Watchdogs, which is an interesting card, you know, pretty 2-2 two, two for 2 with a sacrifice of food to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Watchdogs and it gains Vigilance until end of turn, uh, which is pretty cool. Dogs are over there eating mushrooms, even though they're protecting them, so they're probably not eating them, but that's okay. Uh, we get another forest in that awesome art and the foil looks really cool on it. That one's got Merkwood on it. Uh, we'd pull a Minus Terrath, Lobelia, Sackville Baggins, Pippin, Warden of Isengard, 
Uh, it was a 2-2 two -two for one black, one green. Partner with Mary, Warden of Isengard. Tap one, tap, create a food token. Tap, sacrifice four foods. Other creatures you control get plus three, plus three, and gain haste until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. Uh, Gimli Counter of Kills, I think we just pulled one of those. Sauron the Necromancer, one of the many faces of Sauron we will see in these packs. Um, pretty cool to see, I like this card. It's the mono black version. I think there's a red and black version, then there's the two versions um, that are Grixis colors. Uh, we get Frodo, Sauron's Bane. So the the one one of the Grixis ones comes in the precon, and then the other one, which I think is probably the more powerful one, uh, is is a mythic. Which I kind of hope I pull so I can replace the one that comes in the precon because I feel like that one is uh, a very powerful card. Not quite as expensive to play, which is a plus. Uh, we get a many partings, improvised club, another snarling warg, another escape from Morthank, Prince Imrahil the Fair, Oath of the Grey Host. Another beautiful forest. So, so far we've pulled three forests um, in that foil. Wow. Uh, we do get a Palantir of Orthanc. Three mana for a legendary artifact. At the beginning of your end step, put an influence counter on Palantir of Orthanc and scry two. Then, target opponent may have you draw a card. If that player doesn't, you mail X cards where X is the number of influence counters on Palantir of Orthanc and that player loses life equal to the total mana value of those cards. That seems very powerful, um, because you're either gonna draw cards, or they're gonna take a lot of damage, potentially. Um, depends on what deck you put it in, but I feel like you would put it in a deck that will do a lot of damage. Um, Fall of Karandros. It's an enchantment, whenever a creature an opponent controls is dealt excess combat, non-combat damage, a mass orcs X, where X is that excess damage, and you can tap seven and a red, and it deals seven damage to target creature. It's an interesting card. Travel through Karadros. Uh, Council's Dilemma. Starting with you, each player votes for Redhorn Pass or Mines of Moria. Uh, for each Redhorn Pass, vote search your library for a base land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. If you search your library this way, shuffle for each Mines of Moria vote, return a card from your graveyard to your hand, and then exile this card. Uh, we get a Legolas, Counter of Kills in that Showcase frame. Another Sauron the Necromancer in that Showcase frame. Uh, Dunland Crabane. Nasty End. And a Baradur in that nice foil full art, um, which actually looks really nice. Not really the best card in my opinion, um, but that looks super nice in that foil. Um, with that nice thunder going through there, or lightning, not thunder. I I know the difference. <laughs> so that is a really cool three packs that we've opened. Um, and now we're gonna top it off with this Realms and Relics box topper, which we really would benefit from pulling a Ancient Tomb. Um, that is probably the highest value card. Uh, Great Henge or the Party Tree would be really cool as well. Uh, but let's see what we get from this one, and it is a... <laughs> Glittering Caves of Al Aglaron, which is a Gemstone Caverns, which is a, actually a pretty good pull. Um, excited to see that. I like these Relics and Realms cards, they're pretty cool, they're really awesome looking. Um, and a, yeah, a lot of them are really good cards. There are some that uh, are not so exciting. Um, unfortunately, we do have like a nice line across there, but cool to see that. Definitely exciting. Um, we will have one more box topper to open eventually, um, which we'll hope to get something really cool out of. I know you can pull those Relics and Realms cards out of the collector packs as well, so um, we can hope for that in some of the packs to come. But if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.